going? I said, are we going? I don't think you understood what I said, Colton. Are we going? We're going. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. Gentlemen, it's kind of loud. Gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Rip My Drip, the installment where you guys submit pictures of yourself, not for a federal database, but for me to rip what you are wearing. I either make fun of you, I either like it, but essentially I rate your kit. There is no actual gradient of how I rate it. It's either like I like it or I don't, and I poke fun at, and I criticize what you put onto your body or what you put into your body. Some of you guys may need to lose some weight in the nicest way possible. But nonetheless, we're gonna proceed and we're gonna have a good time. If I make fun of you, just know I am the only one allowed to do that. No one else in your life is allowed to criticize you and make fun of you, only me, because you guys, you're my boys, right? We're all friends here, it's a safe space. Life's hostile, life is not friendly. People can be rude. I'm gonna be rude to you today, but just know it comes from a place of love, all right? All right, question for the day. Now, before we dive in, make sure you like and subscribe. YouTube is not a big fan of what we do here, so sometimes they may unsubscribe you. And the question for the day, because I want to comment, is if I dropped you back, let's go 1400s, late medieval era, would you rather have a high point yeet cannon or the best crossbow money could buy? Wrong answer, it's supposed to be an English war bow. But let me know in the comment section down below what you would rather prefer. Now, diving in. First kit, we have 7.62. Pretty sick setup. The kit, this guy alone makes me want to get a friggin' HK91. I can't explain it. As far as battle rifles go, it's probably technically a little bit antiquated. I mean, the round itself will absolutely rock your world, but the weapons platform itself, it's cool. I like it. A lot of nostalgia there. It's like the king of the Cold War. And he has a Velocity Systems jungle rig. Now, someone who has used a bit of belt kit, I haven't tried out the Velocity Systems rig yet, and I wanted to get one, but then I got some other belt kits and I was like, well, unless they send it, I don't know if I want to send the money on it yet, unless people really want me to talk about it. But nonetheless, it looks really cool. And this is a vibe. This passes the vibe check. It looks cool and I like it. Next, we have 26 underscore Daldulus. Some of y'all's Instagram names a little bit candy wampus. So this kit is actually kind of interesting. So he's got some fun things going on. He's going for a SWAT look, maybe like a, I, I would definitely say a European SWAT look. So it's pretty sick. He's got a little Ingall aim point comp M4 it looks like. I'm a surefire. I'm totally blanking on the name of the stock, but it looks like the one with the low, like the low wire. I'm not too familiar with it. So I haven't had any time on that particular stock, but if it doesn't have that tan adapter for a cheek weld, I feel like those stocks would be really sick to run if you had a visor on. I think that's why they exist. Now, as far as this cop kit goes, I don't know. I am not familiar with cop kit of Europeans, but I will say the taser holster on his body as a pouch. It's not ideal. Ask me how I know. If you start running around seriously, you're gonna lose that thing. Even if you don't lose it, if it doesn't bounce out somehow, re-indexing your taser in that could be tricky, unless it's not, like unless you figure it out as kit. I know from how I had my taser set up in a weird way before, like using a pouch setup, it wasn't optimal for getting your taser back in. And if you have to like arrest someone, someone that's committed a crime, right? Like you have your taser out, and then it's like, all right, you gotta go hands on with them. You just have to like try and get your taser back away. Sir, stop resisting, stop resisting. Otherwise, pretty cool kit. Like the European cop kits for the SWAT guys, I should say. Like the Dutch DSI, I think it's the German GSK. The German SWAT guys or the Metro Armed Police or like the UK DTSFO. Like those guys all look pretty cool. I'll give them that. They're vines, they're aesthetics. Clay Turk with a Vietnam kit. This looks cool, right? I love the vibes of the Vietnam kit. Looks like he's LARPing as an airborne guy. And, you know, I respect it. If you're out there running around, LARPing on the flat range or at the airsoft field in your reenactment kit, kudos to you. This passes the vibe check. Next we have definitely a chick magnet. My brother in Christ, you're scaring the hoes. Now he's looking like he's, he's all ACU'd out. And from everyone I talked to, the ACU camo works really good if you're only in a gravel pit. Other than that, they all hated it. But the ACU is a vibe if you're going for the Modern Warfare 2 look, which it kind of looks like he's trying to be the cover of Modern Warfare 2. Now that game is steeped in nostalgia for me. I grew up in those Xbox lobbies and that's when where I went from being a boy to a man. I got bullied a lot in those because I had like a high-pitched junior high voice. 
Let's have flashbacks. The M16 looks cool. If this is airsoft kit, then hey, more power to you. I will say the drop leg holster like that, those from what I've seen, it's like anyone that has those and they start running, it's like this around their leg. It's funny about like a lot of kit like this when you throw in a lot of kit and like you have all this gear. I think you think you look cool in some capacities. There's some truth to that, but you throw everything on, you're like, God, dude, this is like too much stuff. I hate having all this stuff on me. I hate having stuff around my hips. Like anybody else, it's just, it's a personal preference thing. Some people are hip, hip gear guys. Ideally, I'm a chest rig kind of guy. There's some exemptions, right? There's some exemptions. And they have a tangent as a snack. Next, we have Devil Dog Reenactment, another reenactor. Now, this guy's actually gonna pop up, I think, one more time, but because he has submitted some sick drip and we gotta give him some kudos. So he has an Operation Urgent Fury from 1983 LARP going on and it has, you know, the retro M16s with the M81, the Alice kit. Even the helmet scrim looks so good. It's all around 10 out of 10. It's a vibe. You heard it here, folks, vibe. Next we have Average Tactical Enjoyer. All right, SKS, got a looks like a ballistic helmet. Got the balaclava. Now, average tactical enjoyer. I will say, whenever I talk about my warlord fantasies, right, you look like my SKS militia. You, you, to a T, to an absolute T. If I was the guy that bought like 20 crates of SKSs and I had to equip them to, to my little underlings, my Mosin farmers, my SKS militia, my AK assaulters, you fit the role perfectly. If this was an audition, Buddy, you got it. You absolutely nailed it. You'll be hearing from my agent soon. We'll be casting you as the SKS Militia. Maybe. Next we have Luke Berry, 308. The man loves 308. He put it in his name. What a mad lad. So Luke's looking like he's in his American serviceman multi-cam camo. But it looks like he's got some sort of like machine gunner kit at a, to some capacity. I could be way off baseline. It looks like he's in a sandbox somewhere in the Middle East that where Americans just love to be, but he's holding an MG3. Now the MG3, if you're not familiar, would be the 762 by 51 variant of the MG42. After World War II, the Germans were like, hey, no, we lost MG42. Kind of sick. Also a very terrifying weapon to get shot at. Ask me how I know. Ah, the MG3 was rechambered in a lot of a lot of countries actually, and they still do use the MG3. MG3 is still in service, even fighting in the Ukraine war as I speak. So it's still a very viable weapons platform. And it looks like this Joe got his hands on one while being in the Middle East somewhere. A little bit jealous. Looks like he had fun. We'll see. Use some more ammo for it. But nonetheless, here we are. Nash Nunner. He has a very practical gun guy loadout. He's got what looks like an M81 slick plate carrier, three mags up front, spare mag pouch, dangler with a tourniquet, battle belt of some capacity with a Safari Land holster. He even kept on the fat guard, which is what I call the, the Safari Land like thumb guard around your holster because like I took that off. And I think they even like one of the reasons it exists because cops are fat mm. and they would like activate their hood on their Safari Land holsters. Pretty way off, but I've heard other guys talk about that and if, it sounds like a fun theory. He's got his knees dirty, it means he's been LARPing hard. M81 boonie. Man is kitted. He is fitted. He is ready for whatever life throws at him. He looks like he's in decent shape. He looks like a guy that likes to go on 5Ks on the weekend, get a nice latte afterwards, and talk about stock prices. He has a very wholesome look to his face. Beneath that, a dark surface lies. He just wants to talk about guns and gear with the boys, but instead he's out with his girl and all of their boyfriends, and he has to sit there and listen to them talk about sports and stock numbers. And he doesn't care because he wants to talk about LARPing, but he has to suppress all of that because his girl is there and she's like, please babe, don't be weird, you're gonna scare my normie friends. But he wants to talk about what's going on in the world. How society is collapsing from the inside out. How our enemies overseas are. It's a core memory for a lot of us. If you've been out with your girl and you want to talk about crazy stuff, but they're like normies, you can't do it. Brand Mal Brand Mali. So the dude is style points and out to the nines. For practicality of the kit, I don't, you know, you can be a judge for yourself, right? He's got a British Enfield number four. I've put a lot of rounds for the British Enfield, both IRL and Hell Let Loose, and I hate playing as a British on El Alamein. I actually hate that map in general. Even though they tried to fix the map, it still sucks. Back to Brand Malili. 
He has the Hawaiian shirt. He's got shorts. He's got a safari looking hat. He's got a lot of stacked chairs in the background. He's somewhere green, so I'm a little bit jealous because in Arizona it's nothing but tan desert. But he looks like a dude that would say, Aloha, clever girl. He looks, he's got that vibe, right? The SMLE being in 303 British is still a very scary round. It's a very big cartridge. And you could probably take down a T-Rex with that thing, if I'm being honest. Funny enough, it's like World War I and World War II guns were like massive hunting round style cartridges, just shooting dudes with no armor on. Wild, wild time. Times, dude. All right, he's back. Devil Dog Reenactment returns, staying true to his name with the Devil Dog Reenactment. He's running a U.S. Marine kit with a frog skin netting on his helmet, got the M1 Garand, and he's got his ODs. He's dressed as a private. He is ready to get off the Amtrak and fight on Peleliu. Actually, I'm gonna go rewatch the Pacific. I usually watch Band of Brothers or the Pacific almost once a month or bi-monthly. I'm overdue. He looks like he'd be out with the boys being like, quoting the Pacific. Sludge hammer. What you gonna do about it, Bill Layton? It's my snafu impression. F you snafu! This ain't my work detail. I just like watching the new guys suffer. Up next, Belfort. 4642. 4,642 other variations of the name Belford were taken. So he had to go with this iteration. He is doing some force on force training. Not airsoft, he's got sims. You can tell by the blue mags and the bolt and the gun. It looks like he's either being the op four with the balaclava, or maybe he's doing some instructing like he's saying in his description. It looks like a good time. Sims hurt and they make me scared. That's why they exist. So there's actually a lot of like pain feedback. They don't do great out to range. I think they even outrange airsoft guns, but nonetheless, they are a great training tool. I have been shot by Sims on multiple occasions. Every time, it does not feel good, so they do their job, but I think it's honestly one of the best ways to get some training in, even though they're like restricting Sims, which sucks. You can't have anything nice around here. The kit. Kit looks good. You know, it looks like you got a plate carrier. You got the HSP uh, chest rig on there. Looks like you're ready to rock and roll. No complaints from me. Be safe. Wear your eye pro and then shoot whoever you need to shoot for the training so they learn. Approved. Shibadaddy SP-12. Now this kit looks so good, I couldn't tell if it was airsoft or real until I saw your airsoft mag in the gun and then I scrolled through your pictures and I said, wow, that looks like a really fun place to play airsoft and I got really jealous. I got rather envious, rather covetous. I coveted thy brother's airsoft spot. It looks like a lot of fun. You guys like play, play other often? Like where's it at? You gonna share with the group? Remember in school when you brought food and the teachers were like, our food? Hey, our spot? Can I, can I play airsoft there? Wait on invite, dude. Like, can I, can I come? Can I come? No? Okay. You have the kit of the very experienced, deep end of the hobby airsofter. Everything is high speed. Everything is dialed in. You have the conventional gun guy kit. Slick plate carrier that holds mags, and then a battle belt to hold your pistol, mags, and probably a spare mag, dump pouch, all that stuff. I would be scared of if I was showing up for the first time and I was a rental wearing my hoodie and the big paintball mask. You are the airsoft death trooper. Keep it up. Keep terrorizing the noobs. Moving on, we have Paul Reislofer. Wait a second, Paul. Are you a Frenchman? That name sounds kind of French. If you're French, Paul, I got a war bow with a bodkin point with your name on it. I'm just talking tough. I like Paul. He seems like a nice guy. He's got a halberd, which is pretty gangster. And then the kit looks like he's got the Swiss top and then he's got some uh, duck hunter camo pants with a, well, it looks like a 16 inch rifle, which is based. He's got a pretty sick, very practical rifle setup that I like a lot. So, all right, let's break down some gun autism. In the gun space, if you become a gun guy or if you have any interest in firearms or if you're the gun guy of your circle of friends, chances are at some point your friends will be like getting the AR-15s and say, hey dude, do I get like, I know 16 inches exist and that's like the, 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 the legality length. But then I was thinking about doing like, an AR pistol or maybe an SBR and I was gonna get it like an 11.5 but then I thought well if I'm gonna do 11.5 I will do like 12.5 then oh, I thought 11.5 12.5 what if I just did like 13.9 or I could do 14.5 pin and weld honestly just work out first and foremost if you're going down that far of a rabbit hole hit the gym and work out get a sick lift going right doesn't matter what gun you're is Marines in Fallujah Right, they're doing room clearing with 20 inch M16s. Is it optimal for CQB? No. Is it actually gonna rock someone's world? Absolutely. Now with a 16 inch carbine, you can get a lot done. One of my go-to rifles is a 16 inch rifle, suppressed, IR, flashlight, LPVO with a red dot. Now Paul has the ACOG with the piggybacked red dot on it. Looks like he's got a D ball and then it looks like a surefire. Very practical setup. And his plate carrier was also pretty good too. I know the slick plate carriers are very trendy in gun culture, they're very common, but carrying a lot of mags 
is very important, right? In a survival dodgeball match, I would say that more mags is better because chances are your own logistical support. If you look at the guys in Ukraine where it's a more conventional fighting, those dudes are pretty kitted up and I don't ever really see them rocking like slick plate carriers and just a pistol belt. That's like the high speed global war on terror guys that got dropped off on a helicopter, hit an objective and then got picked back up on a helicopter. That makes sense, right? Or if you're doing more vehicle stuff, you can either have a bigger load or a lighter load because you're getting carried around. There's a lot that goes into it. It's a rabbit hole. It's up to your discretion. I don't care what you do. There's always a plane, but I like Paul's setup. The so Paul with the halberd, Pray to God you're not French. I'm just kidding. I like my French guys. They're pretty scary. Aren't you French, Colton? Yeah, I'm French. Fuck. Gentlemen, these kits look pretty stylish. You know who else wants to make you look stylish? This video is sponsored Americana Pipe from Apparel. Fantastic young Zoomers. Getting after it. The no serve space and arena, guys. Big fan of AP. Night vision knives, manuals. Not just night vision knives. Maybe they have night vision knives. I don't know. Check the website. But they are fantastic at getting you equiped with some mil serve gear, MREs, other stuff you may need, camping stuff. They got it. They're doing the Lord's work, getting you fitted to the nines. I'm sure some of you even in there probably got something from Americana Pipe Dream. Possibly, maybe, accusations being thrown. Oh, we have some real devil dogs, not reenactors. Z Sporty at 29 Palms, California. Nothing is more terrifying than Marines with a nicotine addiction getting dropped off on your coastline, unsupervised and ready to destroy everything in their path. And these gentlemen, I don't know who is who, but they look like they're kitted and ready to go. Now I've seen a common trend that I find interesting amongst the Marines is, is a lot of them do on their riggers belt, if they're like a rifleman, or if I'm guessing if they're enlisted guys, a lot of those guys will run like double stack mags on their kit. So they have their armor and then they have double stack mags, I should say on their belt line and on their plate carrier, as you can see in the picture. Now they also have pouches for frags. I on the right has the first spear tubes. Mega base, dude. It looks like a first spear carrier. It could be wrong. I've been wrong before. All right, sometimes I get things wrong. I'm only human. Come on. But it does look like a first spear carrier. I could be, I could be off the mark. The helmet scrim goes hard. The Magpul bipod, I hate it. Get a Harris, Bruh. but if you have to pay for it, that might suck. And the frag pouches. Now, guy on the left, he has a slick front. He has some pouches on the side, but I do like the slick front because you can get extra low to the ground. If you ever had a plate carrier or a chest rig on, you're double stacking mags and you get prone, you're like getting raised up a little bit. That's a thing. I could, I could see the thing. I've talked to a more experienced saw gunners even, and they'll say, hey, we like to put our mag pouches on the sides or maybe down low where it's not impeding on their armor so they can get a lower purchase <laughs> to the ground. So that's sick. Gotta love my Marines. My Marines out there eating their crowns, smoking their cigs, and being all around destructive and violent as God intended. We have Casey Manley 3, and boy, is he living up to the name. Not only is he cradling his sweet, sweet, precious doge, he has on a pretty sick <laughs> It. He's got his night vision. He's got a carry handle with a bayonet that looks like a trench knife bayonet, and he's got a rifle on his back that has a pitchfork attachment. The man exudes readiness and violence. And then it looks like he has like Mosin pouches on <laughs> with Alice kit. And he's got a comically large, like a night vision looking scope on his carry handle rifle. Dude, the confidence. The confidence is something I strive to have. And brother, it looks like you got it. We have Axes and Allies. Great board game if you want to blow at an entire week of your life just playing a board game. Now I screenshotted two pictures here because I think they're really funny. This World War II kit, or it could be Korean War vibes because he's in the snow and he's got the dogskin pattern helmet and he's got a nice long trench coat. I don't know the technical names off the top of my head. My brain can only hold so much guys and I'm already a low IQ individual, okay? Cut me some slack here. He's got the M1, he's looking like a vibe. And then he committed the bit. He went face first into the snow. Maybe he collapsed from starvation, dehydration, enemy wounds. He spawned the garrison, praying for you. Ashman 1598, because 1,598 iterations of Ashman were taken. Ashman's rocking that Phantom Fury Marine loadout. I like this kit a lot. Probably isn't the most fun to run around in as far as like weight the body armor, the water, the canteens, but at least your nuts are protected, which is important, especially in airsoft, because a BB welt to the dong, gonna sting a little bit, brother, it's gonna hurt, it's gonna feel so good. So your gonads are guarded, good on ya. I like the kit, looks good, mustache, needs some work, but it looks marine accurate. <laughs> We have Pez Sierra 45. Because 45, <laughs> the German flecktarn pants, the gas mask, whatever handgun you're holding on to. I don't know how you, if that's even real or fake, but you're in Australia, so it's like 
I think you guys banned gel blasters, which is a major cuck move, but it's chaotic, it's bold. It's in your face. Maybe I can't find you in the bush. Keep up the good work. Next we have the war shark. So first off, this is an air softer. You can tell instantly. Second off, if the war shark, if this guy, after every time he wins an airsoft match, doesn't run around with a shark fin on his head like this, flexing and moging on his opponents after winning, if he doesn't do that, he's a phony and a fraud. I don't trust him. Don't, don't, don't do anything he ever says or does if he doesn't do this, all right? Now let's dive into his kit. So his headpiece is a face, ballistic face coverage. Now that's a real thing that, that does exist. I think it has to do with like flak to some capacity, but he has drawn on it big shark's mouth, kind of like the uh, the vintage World War II aircraft look, right? It's cool. It's very airsoft and tacky, though. So there is that. He's got some shoulders to die on written on his, on his shoulders. Okay. I'm going to clown on his holster choice. So his holster choice, it's like that weird uh, nylon holster that somehow takes like every gun in existence is what it feels like. I hate those holsters. There's no logical reason why I hate them because they're not a Safari Land or like an Alien Gear holster. Is this founded in reason and logic? I don't know. But I can do whatever I want. I can do that. He looks like he's got an AK-74 SU build, and he's got the uh, the Amazon red dot. If I zoom in even more, it looks like it's cracked a little bit. Besides the uh, the shark look on his on his mask, that was my very first giveaway. Is that no serious gun owner uses those red dots? I'm gonna bully you for that. Even in airsoft, you can get Chinese knockoffs of like EOTechs. But I will say the Face Pro is actually pretty practical for airsoft because getting shot in the mouth sucks. Or shark. It's airsoft. It's tacky. I still love you, but it does fit your branding. So good job. Funny enough, we have another person that has a shark style. <laughs> this one makes more sense because he's an ODST, an orbital drop shock trooper, hell divers from above, not the game. This is truly some peak LARPing. You got the ODST armor panels on there, the armor on the rig. I am very jealous of his rifle. I want to get my own version of a Halo rifle. I even want a realistic version of a Halo rifle that maybe even shoots real lead. I wish there was a thing in gun culture where people would actually make sci-fi guns that work. It's not practical. It's probably a really niche demographic. At the worst, you can do blank fire guns as like a movie prop. At best, they also shoot real rounds. It's a really big ask because why? The why is it would be really cool. Probably some money there. Mike Spencer. 2A. He is looking like he is ready to go and destroy a Minecraft village and steal all their oil. He is a Minecraft villager NPC. He has got the multi-cam kit, a short-barreled rifle with the stream light. Brother, ugh. I'm just kidding. They actually work pretty good. Now, you get points for the front dump pouch because I'm a big fan of the front dumpy. The front pouch. Front dumpy pouch. The frumpy pouch. There we go. He worked to it. Multicam. Boring. Seen it a dozen times, buddy. Seen the fed cam all over the place. Sure, it looks cool at times, but is it truly cool? It's better than M81. You think you're better than M81? Oh, he's got an Arizona flag. Hey, I take everything back. Fellow Arizonan. Good in my book. Where are you? World War Wisdom. Now, World War Wisdom is not just a LARPer, but a fellow YouTube LARPer, a reenactor, one might say. And this guy knows a lot about his World Wars, mainly World War II, I think. But he's at a reenactment, he's got the dirty face, he's got the helmet mesh on his noggin, he's clean shaven, he looks young, like he belongs, he is fit, he looks the part, his M1 looks dirty too, like he has seen some combat, like he is a veteran in Hell Let Loose. Wow. I can't stress how much Hell Let Loose I've been playing. Even the period accurate vehicle in the background, and he went as far to make this photo black and white. I love this. More of this. I decree, bring me more, more. I like it a lot. It looks really good. He also has a YouTube channel, go check him out. He dives into some very, the niche World War II topics. He's like, why did soldiers wear these bootstraps? It's like, I, I had no idea, but thankfully I know now. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Minri Rambo 95, because 95 other iterations. So it looks like you got some PBS 7s. Is that a PBS 7 on your noggin? Looks like it. You got the gas mask, the helmet. You get the wide shoulders, so it looks like you work out. You got the chest rig. You got the drop leg, double strap leg holster. Let me know how that's working out for you if you actually like that. I feel like they all suck, but hey, if it works for you, go for you. With a rifle with an LPVO, offset red dot, generic m lock rail. Kit's decent. Gas mask looks like it sucks. Moving on. Next we have the indecisive shooter. Hey, why are you so indecisive? You should make up your mind. Would you rather do something or doing nothing at all? Because doing nothing at all is the worst course of action. Don't be indecisive. Seize the day. 
carp those fish, dude. Carp the carp, carpe diem. He's an Arizona boy. I actually know this guy. I like him. He's got a 20 inch M16 rug skin camo. He's got like a modern World War II Marine vibe to him. The desert and the high deserts. I actually don't know if that qualifies as the high desert. Looks like he's got an ACOG piggyback red dot, 20 inch weapon light, CAC forward grip. He's got the actual correct way to do the, he's got the holster and it looks like he's got plenty of mags. He even has a very long radio antenna for talking to the boys because it gets lonely if you can't talk to your boys, man. Man, fellas, where you at? So he's looking good. I like this kit. It's a very practical setup for Arizona. You have magnification. You have a very good ballistically performing gun. 20 inch AR or 20 inch 556 platform, I should say. What's not to love? Practical, plenty of ammo. Moving on. Now we're going back in time. Big red in the wild. This man is big. He is red. He has no soul, but he's in the wild. Gotta love me some gingers. Poor bastard. He's got the War of Northern Aggression. He looks pretty solid. I actually like this look a lot. And again, I love my historical reenactors. Guys, keep it up. This is good stuff. This is good. It's tasty. Chef's kiss. What am I supposed to critique about this? You look historically accurate. Can you imagine this dude running at you with the bayonet? He's terrifying. He looks like a defensive lineman with a triangle tip bayonet, dead sprint at you, coming to spear your gullet. I say, Nathaniel, these Union boys look rather terrifying. It's my best Confederate impression. Longshot.dev T6, which I assume is like some sort of development team six, right? You got a Stoner 63, and he still has AR mags on his kit. You got the battle belt, rig, slick carrier, very modern. I think the Indonesian kit is probably the coolest part. Boomsticks in Battlefield. I'm assuming this man loves the Battlefield franchise. So I screenshot multiple of his pictures because the kit and the drip is very drippy. He did a high quality camera. I know everyone doesn't have access to high quality cameras. That's okay. I complained about in the past. I get it. Save your money and spend it on kit. If you don't need a camp wipe, why would you need it? It's fun for catching memories. Other than that, everyone's got a smartphone. Smartphone cameras are pretty good, but he went above and beyond. He's got his patis on. He even has the crutches and the medic bag. He's got the French look. It's pretty solid. As far as like LARPing, especially LARPing a video game goes, this is like a 10 out of 10. It doesn't get much better than this. He even did like the smudge on the face. Like he looks like he is ready to spawn in and get explosive spammed in Battlefield 1. He looks phenomenal. And it's only getting better because we have the unbroken barb. Now this isn't even tactical kit. Well, it's technically tactical if you're in like the fantasy land. He looks like he's ready to arrest me for stealing a loaf of bread after I've been starving. He looks like he's like the dude driving the wagon. He looks like a character from Skyrim. He's ready to take on the dragon and steal all its gold. Bro's fitted. <laughs> My lords and lads, people of the court, Matthew Justice 223, because 200, okay, I'm sorry. Now you think you're cool with your rifle, your tactical gear, until a dude with a mortar shows up and absolutely removes you from the face of the earth. You maybe have taken shots in gunfire, you hide, all of a sudden you hear, Soo, boo, you just watch your buddy get his butthole blown through his nose by a mortar round. That's terrifying. We in gun culture, we obsess over our small arms. You know, oh, what, what, what AR-15 should I get? Oh, what Glock should I get? This dude's got a mortar. He's got a mortar. Yeah, he's a Marine. He has access to this stuff. And he looks freaking cool. The nicotine addiction with the cigarettes. That's on par with the Marine Corps, buddy. Deal with it. He's got the M4 rattle can with the ACOG. The kit looks good. That Marine camo and the tan, he looks like he is ready to be unsupervised and committing mass amounts of violence on foreign shores. MIG 29G. We got a lad rocking some sick retro kit. You got the MP5 SD. He's got the Borger oil rig vibe to him. You've seen this style of LARP here before, so it's not necessarily like too crazy for him personally. Hey, proud of you. Retro looks good, keep it up. Bob of the AIF. Now Bob, I would say, looks like an Australian mate from Dan Under. I come from a land down under. Now I am ignorant as to the model of the rifle. It looks like he's got a piece of kit, like a plate carrier that has some spare mags. He's got a red dot, a weapon light on there, and it looks like he could do some damage with that setup. Like the Call of Duty snipers run around with bolt action with red dots. It kind of gives me that vibe, but it's the only thing he has access to, so it's very practical for him. Hey, being down under, you got yourself a rifle, which is sick. I assume the biggest threats down there are going to be kangaroos and crocodiles, and everything else that slithers, crawls, and wants to eat your eyes for jujubes. 
And then to finish everything off, we have Jack Laid Law. He looks like he's a crusader. He's got the pattern 83 webbing and he has the AUG, and not just any AUG, he's got the AUG with the H-bar barrel. So he can provide cover support while maintaining a nice light weapons platform. The reclamation of the Holy Land is not gonna be neat, right? Crusades are not pretty. You ask any medieval European how the crusades were going, oftentimes a lot of bloodshed, right? I am Salah Haladin, but Jack, Kit looks good. You get bonus points for being unique. Yogg, I've used an AUG with an H-bar. A little bit funky, but it gets the job done. Gentlemen, this was another iteration of Rip My Drip. We take a look at the kit that you guys are wearing. Some of it is off the walls, bonkers. Some of it, pretty practical. Nonetheless, all of it looks good. And what's most important is getting out there and getting after it. Working out, training, and testing all of this stuff and putting it through its limits. For safety reasons, you're not gonna hit shit in a Crusader helmet. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all about having fun. At least you had fun. I got nothing else for you. I'll catch you guys on the flip. I have something else for you. I mean, merchandise helps out the channel greatly. It helps us do projects and other weird stuff and is an excellent way to support the channel as well as Patreon. If I'm doing my job, then you'll have early access. There's a Discord, a bunch of stuff going on behind the scenes. But a big thank you to my Patreon guys. It does mean the world. I got Now I have nothing else. Okay, bye. More!